What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out my top 5 favorite tech items of the month, sponsored by Oculus. Now, we got 5 total things to go over here, and these are things that I've just been using lately that I haven't really showed off to you guys, that have been some of my favorites lately. So we'll go over them all, if you see anything you like, I'll have them listed for you in the description down below, so you can check them out. Now first up is a keyboard that I love from Ducky, and this is, I think, a great step for the overall keyboard market. This is their Year of the Rat keyboard. They collab with popular Taiwanese graffiti artists known as Bounce, and he pretty much designed the whole thing, which gives it that, you know, very unique look. Usually keyboards don't look like this, but it's got a few cool things going on. So first off, in terms of the overall design, it's their standard 60% layout. You know, it's still their one too many, but obviously with their Bounce collab, you have those accents and sort of novelties on the keyboard itself that make it really stand out. Now, yes, it might be a bit, you know, in your face. The font might not be for you. It kind of like resembles that graffiti or like Sharpie look on a keycap, but that's not the point to this keyboard. There's two things in particular that I think is a really good thing, like I said before, for the keyboard market. First off is the fact that this keyboard has a hot swap PCB. So in this unit, I have cherry red switches, but with them being hot swap, you can freely take those switches out and then replace them if you have switches. Maybe you don't like linears, you like clickies. You can swap out these red linears, then put in some box jade switches, some Royal Navy switches. It's up to you now to customize your keyboard in a whole new way, something we haven't seen from Ducky. And that leads me to the bigger picture about this keyboard, is I think the year of the rat one too many here is going to be a bit of a trendsetter in a way. So for example, you don't see big companies like Corsair, Razer, SteelSeries have a hot swap PCB. They don't have a single hot swap keyboard that we can pick from. So the fact that Ducky is doing this and giving us a popular feature with a big brand like this, I think it's only going to pave the way and have companies open their eyes more and hopefully give us a hot swap keyboard later on down the line. And I say that because Ducky is a very popular brand when it comes to sort of changing things up. So for example, the one too many itself when that launched uh, the original version, you know, 60% keyboards were like not unheard of, but they were not common. They were not the norm. They were not popular at all. That keyboard still to this day, one of the top selling most popular, and now you're starting to see a bunch of keyboard companies, a bunch of big brands put out their own 60% keyboards. So I think this is doing a lot of great things. And also, while the appearance and aesthetics of the year they're at version might not be for everybody, I hope it still just encourages more companies out there to take a risk with the design. Give us some, you know, cool keycaps, other design choices to it other than a boring 60% with just ugly keycaps. Um, so I just really think this keyboard as a concept and as a theory is what's really exciting me about the future of keyboards. Not so much the tangible keyboard itself, but what Ducky is doing really. Next, sticking with some gaming stuff for a minute, how about an alternative to a keyboard, which is this crazy looking gamepad. This is called the Azeron Classic. A just ridiculous looking all 3D printed custom keypad that has crazy features. I'm going to keep saying crazy because look at it. That's the best word to describe this. So obviously in terms of aesthetics and you know just visuals, it mimics that of like a hand, right? But built in, not only do you get a analog thumbstick, you get an additional joystick plus 26 individual programmable keys. So with just five fingers, you have 26 keys plus the two thumbsticks available to you. It comes in a bunch of different colors. I just have it in the blue variety here, but on their site, they literally have just tons to pick from. And I like how customizable it is. Each of the fingers can be spaced out to, you know, kind of fit your hand size or your grip, I guess you could say. You can extend the keys, bring them closer to you, anything to fit your hand. And what's really interesting about this is in order to press down or actuate those 26 keys, it's not like a key switch, like on a keyboard, for example. They use key switches you would find in a gaming mouse. So they're easy to press, to actuate, nice and crisp. I'll do a little sound test so you could hear it real quick.
Now, unfortunately, you're gonna need to spend a lot of time in their software to fully go through and program this, you know, assign all the keys to what you want to, you know, hit in game. Uh, just take time. It's a lot. I understand all different keys, all different functions. So reprogramming it might take some time. Uh, but once you start to get used to it, muscle memory kicks in. Pretty intimidating. You know, there's a lot going on but it's worth really fine tuning all the keys and making them what you want them to be. Now with something like this that has a joystick, you can use that to you know, fully move around in game, kind of like you would on console, like the PS5 or the Xbox. So this is gonna give you a lot of options to game one of two ways. You can either game like that with your thumb on the joystick, moving it around as you would full 360, then use your four other fingers to just whatever you want to uh, assign those other keys to be. You can use those fingers to take advantage of that. I can see this being good for new PC gamers, people transitioning from console to PC gaming. This could help you out that way. You can also then assign those three main fingers with your ring finger, middle, and pointer finger as WASD and try to assign and learn gaming that way. So yes, it's intimidating. It's a lot to learn, but I think considering you have all these keys, all these functions literally right at your fingertips, next to them, beside them, under them, above it, <laughs> It's insane. Not only for gaming, but this could be just an insane keypad for photo editing, video editing. Um, I don't even know. And it is just honestly one of the coolest pieces of tech I've come across in a while. So needed to show it off for you guys. Next up at number three, where'd I put it? Oh yeah, been here the whole time. We have the Oculus Quest 2. And like I said in the beginning, this video is sponsored by Oculus, but all the thoughts and opinions are my own. The Quest 2 is a wireless VR headset, came out a few months ago, but I am loving not being tied down. Gaming freely like this is really cool. So with the Quest 2, you get some good hardware upgrades, which is always important. Uh, the two LCD panels inside have 50% more pixels than the original Quest, coming in at 1832 by 1920. There's also 90 hertz support coming soon. For specs, you're using a Snapdragon XR2 platform, which greatly improves on CPU and GPU usage, as well as six gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage in this unit. It's also a bit lighter as well, so there's no pressure points on my head when I'm using it. And also their touch controllers have also been redesigned. With the buttons, joysticks, and triggers, it's just very natural and ergonomic to use while you're gaming. But also one thing they added that I think is really cool is the fact that the Quest 2 itself uses sensors to track your hands now. I just got this update and it's been really cool. So you can literally use your hands and your fingers. It tracks it all real time. You can grab the navigate menus. Pinching is like pressing A on their touch controller. The key word here is everything just feels natural. It's really cool. But for gaming, everything just looks so much more crisp now. With the 64 gigs of internal storage, have a few games downloaded, and it's really cool to be able to just, you know, stand up. Some games let you walk around if you set a boundary. Have that freedom, have that space. But another thing that's really cool with this is if you do prefer, you know, more detailed gaming and stuff, and you do want to be tied down, you can use the Oculus Link and tether this to your PC. And in there, you can go in and play games you have in your Oculus library, your Steam library, for example. So I can kick back and play something like Half-Life Alex or Dirt Rally 2, which has been just crazy to sit down and play. Literally, just like while I'm driving around, you can look all around inside the car, look around the world behind you. It's been just so fun to have both those options, either, you know, wireless gaming or with the Oculus Link, the Quest 2 has definitely been a really cool upgrade. I feel like once Half-Life Alex came out, it kind of revived VR a bit, so I've been happy to sit down, get some gaming done in these new dimensions of a different world. Now you're probably wondering what in the world this is. And this is two separate products here that I picked up, but they go hand in hand, or just on head. We have the Focali Lex headphones and the Memento Mori amplifier, which is this all CNC aluminum skull that is a crazy powerful amp, in addition to being a pretty interesting conversation piece, if you will. But yes, this serves a purpose more than just scaring children. And you. Now you guys know me by now. This is like not my aesthetic at all. It's the complete opposite, if anything. But it just looks so crazy and different than any other amplifier I've seen. So I wanted to check it out. Imported it from the Netherlands, and man, it is just honestly overkill. It's way too powerful for my needs with the Focalix headphones, which I'll show you in a minute. I only have the amp at like 20% volume, and it's still peaking the drivers here, so it's just not necessary in any way. But like I said, it's just so different. You have ports on the backside for your DAC, speakers, sono cables, but the main quarter inch jack in the front's for your headphones. 
Also serving purpose on the front is the input dial on the left, and the right is the volume dial. You can see when it's powered on, the eyes glow red, you have the level meters dancing in each eye. Yeah, definitely a one of a kind product. But one of my latest pickups from Massdrop, now just known as Drop, is their collab with Focal to bring the Alex headphones. I got these right after the holidays, and let me tell you, they are beautifully made and sounding. Most of you know I always prefer an open back design, especially for gaming, and the way the sound stage is widened here, uh, everything just sounds more natural and immersive, rather than it sounding like I have drivers hanging off my head, even though I technically do. Uh, the sound stage of the Alex just makes you kind of think twice. Pretty much most other open back headphones I've tried kind of sound like you know the sound is coming from mainly your peripheral vision, as you want to think of it that way. Some are wider, yes, but these really replicate that full 360 soundstage, and it still maintains presence and clarity in the vocals. You have a bright treble response, which makes everything sound lively and crisp with certain instrumentals. Bass does take a bit of a hit, kind of naturally due to the open back design, uh, but I'd still say it's well controlled overall and sounds better with music than it does gaming. And yes, gaming with these has still been a blast almost literally because again, just the sound stage and overall presence of these headphones make everything sound so alive and open. Like I'm literally there in the battlefield with everything going on around me. They were a bit on the heavier side just due to the construction, uh, but they use these super soft microfiber pads that are like clouds on my head. So kind of makes up for the weight. Are these my favorite headphones of all time? No. Are they perfect for my needs? No, but there is something to be said for an open back pair of headphones that just does sound stage right and kind of lets me, you know, zone out in the world and take in my gameplay and the ambience of that world, even for listening to music again, because each pair of headphones are going to sound different. So I've definitely just been enjoying these lately. They deserve some love. The last but not least has been a really great addition to my editing workflow. This is the Loop Deck Live. And you can kind of say it's like a Stream Deck competitor in a way. It's got uh, 12 programmable LCD screens, six knobs, eight buttons, all programmable, switch it all up. And when it comes to video editing, this is definitely cool. You may be familiar with Loop Deck. They make other similar editing tools. And I really like this one because it's small and compact. I'd say it's right about the same size as the regular Elgato Stream Deck, but still has a ton of functionality with the extra dials and buttons built in. Now with it being named Loop Deck Live, they really targeted this more for streamers than anything I feel. So whatever you're using this for, you're gonna have a lot of flexibility and control. For me, I pretty much just use this for editing in Premiere, and it took a long time. Like, I'm still learning. The learning curve is larger than your mom, but having those precise dials to tune through color correction, jog the timeline frame by frame, it's very, very useful. For the 12 screens, they're capacitive, so you get a nice sort of vibrating response when you press them, and everything can be programmed in their software. Now, the software itself is probably the biggest con about this. Again, since there's just so much you can do with it, it takes a lot of time to learn, a lot of trial and error to go through, and correctly assign everything that you want it to do. Uh, thankfully, just built into the software itself, it does already have a lot of preset layers and functions for certain apps that it's compatible with. So you can go through if you have any of those. Everything is different and unique to the certain software. So like Premiere, Photoshop, Ableton, Chrome, Spotify, it's all there and it automatically launches those layers uh, when you open said software. But making custom functions is kind of where it gets tricky. Uh, since there's a literally like a function for everything you can think of on your PC and for every program, going through and finding the right one and then assigning it, that's where it gets a bit much. One of the cool things about the custom functions is that you can create your own icon to be displayed on the Loop Deck Live. While it's only possible now with custom functions, uh, thankfully they said they're gonna be adding that in the software to be done for you know anything. You can add your custom icon, which is gonna be cool because that way for like color corrections and like the panels and stuff, having a visual logo and instead of just text everywhere, it's gonna be nice. I'm not messing up you know, the wrong curves 24 seven. So again, much like that Azeron gamepad, the time spent using this and perfecting the functions and muscle memory is gonna pay off huge in the end. The more I use it, the more I get used to it, the faster I'll be able to fly through color grades and edits with precision. So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for my video, showing you some of my favorite tech of this month, sponsored by Oculus. If you wanna check anything out, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below. If you like this sort of video, let me know. I was thinking maybe doing them monthly, quarterly. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you guys think. But if you did like this one, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.